here's Brody Brazil. In this video, I'll be explaining my entire signal chain for this microphone, the Sennheiser MKH416, in tandem with my interface, that's the Universal Audio Apollo Twin X. Now, it's ironic that I'm sharing this combination because it's one that I actually rarely use. This microphone has become my go-to for live streaming in remote situations. It's actually packed away in a Pelican case most of the time. I use this mostly with my Personas Revelator IO24 interface. I've got a whole separate video on that here on my channel. But I thought it may be valuable because some of you have this mic or this interface and you want to use them together. I'll show you the settings that I've optimized in just a second. But first, two kind of disclaimers. Number one is that this room is entirely treated. So just like any good mic, any really high-end microphone, it needs to perform best in a room, in an acoustic environment that best suits it. And I'm talking about, uh, in this case, reflection panels on the wall that, that deaden and dampen the sound in here. Um, otherwise, you're going to get a lot of echo. The mic is not itself going to make things sound good. You, number one, need the environment. And number two, I also want to explain how I've set this up here and the settings I'll, I'll share with you. What I'm trying to get out of this microphone is kind of a broadcasty sound. So, yes, some compression, maybe a little bit more than most, uh, more than usual, some equalization so that I can get the sizzle off this mic. I can also get a nice, you know, pretty distinct and robust low end. Um, I'm trying to create a sound that can translate well on an iPhone speaker, on a home stereo system, on a car audio system. There, there's a number of different ways that I think this audio is going to be consumed. So I need it to sound good on all those different sources. And so all of that factors into what I've tried to do here. Okay, let's dive into the settings. So here's the channel I'm working on here, the MKH416. Let me just confirm that the settings are in fact right for this microphone. And there we go. Okay, so top to bottom here, I use the SSL E channel 4000E pretty much on all of my microphones as the Unison plugin here in Universal Audio. It's give, it gives me a lot of flexibility. I always say this, it's like a Swiss Army knife. In this case, I'm gained up 28 and a half dB, not using any compression here, but I am using a little bit of expansion. The range is just below five, fast attack, fast release, and the threshold is somewhere at about negative 10. And when I stop talking, you can see it takes away about 6 dB of gain. I'll also show you what it sounds like with the expansion off. There it is off. And if you're listening on headphones, maybe try and listen for microphone self-noise, room noise, listen closely. All right, so maybe you can hear some of that. And maybe I should also explain this. I choose this microphone for my remote streaming setup because it's got all the, the sound of a condenser, but the durability and the rear and, and side sound rejection of a dynamic microphone, right? We know there's two different types, and so I don't want to pack a condenser. I don't want to put the, the U87 in a Pelican case. That seems unrealistic for the amount of traveling and, and moving around I do with it. Uh, but I am willing to put this microphone, again, because of its build and uh, its robustness, um, but also its sound. It sounds a lot more like a condenser than it does a dynamic microphone. Okay, now that I've got that squared away, uh, that's expansion. Then here, I'm not low cutting at all. I'm cutting on the high end at about 16,000. And then we get into the EQ section here of the 4000E. My high frequency is boosting at 4,000 hertz, just a little bit. Let's call it 1.5 dB. Then in the high mids at 6,500, I'm taking away about 2 dB on a pretty tight Q. 6,500 is what I found is my sibilance frequency. And this mic has a ton of top end. I'll talk more about that in just a second. So that's kind of the area that I'm taming a little bit specifically for the S's, 6,500 hertz. Then we get into the low mids here. I always take out some around 275. Uh, for me, it's that boxiness. And I'm taking away about 4 dB, but watch if I add that 4 dB, or sorry, if I, if I add a lot right there, you can clearly tell that that's the sound right there that I'm trying to take away. Um, and you'll see as I get to the low end here, I'm actually adding 4 dB at about 100 hertz. So that addition 
plus the cut right here at 275, that always seems to create a nice low end with some punch, but also not with the muddy, boxy sound you get in the you know two to five hundreds. Okay, so that's that right there. The sliders push up a little bit, so is the output, just to really kind of saturate this plug in and make sure that I'm getting the sound out of it. Now watch if I take the EQ off. Okay, so I just took it off. Here's the EQ off of this channel strip. There is an EQ later in line here, the Neve 1073 that I'll get to, but here's what it sounds like off. Okay, and now I'll put it back in, and clearly you can hear right there uh, the low end came back, some of the other frequencies kind of went away and came back. If you're listening critically, um, you can hear the difference right there. All right, so that's kind of one section, one plug-in that I use here in my chain. You also see the 1176. That's from an old version. Again, I modified these settings pretty much once a year for every mic. I refine them. Um, in this case, this past year, it was this 4,000 hertz boost. I found that um, two things. I was I was cutting a little bit too much in this boxy range here to the point of like 5 or 6 dB. So I eased off there. And then at 4,000, I started to push all my mics a little bit more to get some intelligibility um, out, out of the frequency response and out of the microphones that I'm using. Obviously, the mics all have different curves, but 4,000 hertz was kind of a frequency I identified that I didn't have enough of in all of my recordings. Okay, now I get to the Neve 1073, not pushing it here on the preamp section. Um, I'm actually reducing, let's call it 1 dB. Each one of these dots is 2 dB. So I'm taking away about 1 dB at 16,000. Now this is the very top end. This mic is very present. And all those air frequencies, pretty much anything above four, five, six thousand 6,000 hertz, I think it boosts everywhere or anywhere up to like 7 dB at places. So a very top-heavy mic. I'm trying to tame that just a little bit. Um, I'm also cutting, actually, right here at 700 hertz. So I told you about the 275 cut. Here's another one of, of 2 dB at 700. I definitely feel like that's another uh, boxy region that needs it. And, and watch, if I push it back here, so you can, you can hear all that nasally sound. I've boosted it, I don't know, 8 dB or something to really emphasize it. Uh, but that's what I want to take away right there at about 2 dB. And then this mic, I, I also, I close talk it quite a bit, um, especially in remote situations too, to try and eliminate as much room reverberation as possible. Um, but it doesn't have the most low end of any other mic. Uh, for example, it doesn't have even the low end of the U87 or the TLM-103, some of its counterparts. So I do push this mic a little bit on the low end at 60 hertz, so kind of a, almost a sub-bass frequency, um, pushing it at 2 dB. I'm also using the only low cut in this chain right here at 80 hertz, and I'll, I'll show you a before and after. The EQ is on here. Now I've turned the EQ off, so you can kind of sense that it, it sounds similar. It just doesn't have that total bottom end, um, you know, it doesn't have that bottom end weight to it. Now I just put it back in, and now it kind of has the full sound. And again, that full sound is what I'm going for. Um, I, I realize if I were tailoring this EQ for an audiobook or long-form narration or even broadcast, I, I would change it up. But because I'm doing YouTube, because I'm uh, doing live streaming, this is the sound that I'm going for. All right, so so pretty much we've gone through the channel strip, uh, some expansion, some, some low and high cutting EQ, and now I put it all together with the LA-2A plug-in, the LA-2A gray plug-in here for Universal Audio. Gained up at about 35, peak reduction, a little over 40, let's call it 42. I'm on limit mode. The emphasis knob is actually here turned at about 3 o'clock. A lot of time for me, it's 2 o'clock, but for whatever reason, it sounds best here at 3. And you can see during normal speech here that my voice is not even triggering it a ton. 0 to 1 dB, but if I really get on the mic here, if I really close talk it, now you can see it's up between 3 and 5, but, but honestly, it's never um, that much. And I do think here if you play with the emphasis knob, it's going to uh, react a little bit differently to how much gain see there. Now now I'm really getting all over this mic, um, but that's probably too much right there. And you can hear it's keying in on a little bit of a different frequency. So this is fine for me. This is kind of the goal. This microphone anywhere between 0 and 3 dB on normal speech. I like to see that needle working just a little bit, but not working too hard. Otherwise, it's over-compressed. Uh, this is a slower optical compressor. I don't want to hear fluctuations in my voice or it disappearing. So pretty much you stay right at the top of this, this arc 
and you're going to be good. So that's it. That's my signal chain. That's what I use for this microphone, the 416 on this interface, the Apollo Twin X. But like I said, this is actually a rare combination for me. Go ahead and check out the other video I've made using the Personas Revelator IO24. Um, that interface, certainly not as exquisite as the Apollo, doesn't have all the plugins. It does do real time processing. I still think this chain with this hardware sounds better. But for me and taking that um, on the road, and I, I'm not bringing the Apollo out of the home studio here. This this thing stays here with me. Um, so the, again, this is a rare combination of mic and interface that I, I have, but I don't normally put together. Also, lastly, this, where would I use this mic? Um, sure, you could use it in a home studio. A lot of people use it for voiceover, imaging. Um, some people say it sounds even a lot different when... You take off the uh, you take off the wind foam the, the, or the, the microphone foam there, and I'm also talking to the side of it now because it is a lot easier to pop. But I wanted you to get a, sa a sample of how it sounds um, with the the wind foam off. Okay. There's actually one more thing I'm going to do here, and that is give you a sound and a sample of what this thing is like. Uh, completely dry and I just turned down the gain to about 40 in fact I think that might even be too high let me let me let me step it back to about 38 dB check my levels okay that seems that seems fair and accurate so this is 38 dB this is completely dry uh, there's no processing on this microphone right now and I and also have to say of all the microphones I own including the u87 AI um, maybe not so much the TLM 103 I would say this and the TLM 103 are the best microphones if you're not going to have any EQ in a signal chain. If you're just going to plug in microphones straight to a recorder, I would do it with the 416 and I would do it with the TLM 103. I do feel like both of these microphones and maybe even the 103 more has some low end presence, some high end sizzle. Uh, this one has more high end than it does the low side. Just keep that in mind, in my opinion. Uh, but both would be great if you didn't have access to real-time processing or you weren't going to do any editing after the fact. Here is what this microphone sounds like, completely dry and unprocessed. And I always like to do this comparison, that right next to this. And we're back on the normal processing. And it just you can instantly tell why I do this, why I add vocal processing to my signal chain for live streaming, for YouTube videos, and other content I make here in the home studio. So that does it. Hopefully some of this helped you. If you liked any of what I shared, give this video a thumbs up so that it can be recommended to others here on YouTube. Also, don't forget to subscribe to my channel. I realize uh, the content material is all over the place in what I put out, uh, but more microphone stuff to come, including all the microphones I own and the brand new signal chain settings that I use. Thanks for watching. See you next time.